Hello, everybody. Can I be heard? Hello. Yeah. Yes, you're audible. Thank you. I see there's a few items on the agenda for which I would maybe expect at least Emily. So I'll give her a minute to join here. Hey, Chase. Thanks for helping to facilitate. Sure. This could be a wild ride, so buckle up. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hey. Hello. I was just given an extra minute or two for folks to join up. Sounds awesome. Has anybody pasted the doc in chat? No. I'll drop it in. But now, but now the race is on. Oh crap, Brandon, like <laughs> inhumanly fast. I just I'm just thinking about the um a name to put in there. <laughs> I see you saw the trend. Oh yes, the uh also known as thing. I've been doing that for a very long time. It really only tickles me. Uh I think people find it strange. But I many... chuckle every time I read it. <laughs> fair, fair enough. Appreciate that. Uh, all right. I'm just going to power forward. Is everybody cool with that? Awesome. Um, so we need scribes. Ash volunteered. Good enough. I think typically we've been getting along with one official. Um, Check-ins from partner groups. I know people are still filling in attendance. Uh, Mark, did you have an update from the NIST NICE community? Yes, uh, I'll keep this short. So uh, NIST NICE is kind of the education side of uh, the NIST operation. And if you want to have input to their curriculum, uh, this is an opportunity to be part of that community. So there's a meeting this afternoon, but I uh, haven't been before, so I can't attest to the quality, but there's definitely a need there. That's it. What is NICE exactly? What's the... Yeah, I forgot the acronym, but it's the cybersecurity content mapping uh, that NIST does. It's Got a it. highly detailed, like on the order of 150 categories of what they call KSAs, knowledge, specific knowledge elements that they think are part of the cybersecurity community. Cool. Thanks, man. Okay, I don't see any other um, general attendee pending updates. Um, one thing is for review of the other meeting, the other security tag meeting. Uh, I looked through their stuff. There wasn't too much, but I did notice that they mentioned the community.cncf.io uh, content. So I ported that note over. And then my thought on this was to kind of power through the couple talking point agenda items first before the presentation. So if no one objects, then I'll hand it over to Emily for the cloud controls or security controls. Thanks, Chase. Um, so issue 635, um, it's linked in the doc, was something that I had mentioned casually in the channel to try to understand whether or not there was an appetite for this. 
Um, this kind of moves towards the exploratory auditability portion of our FY21, FY22 roadmap um, as, an, as one way of exploring this particular area. The cloud native security controls, in my opinion, which is just mine, very opinionated, is a way for us to assist organizations in understanding implementation specifics about the cloud native security white paper and the software supply chain security paper to um, and build on top of that body of work to provide auditability against some of those recommendations. So this is not designed to be another mapping of regulatory compliance and industry standards. This is more to be specific about cloud native security and a lot of the things that we discussed. Um, there's a lot of information in the issue. And the last comment I have on the issue is kind of a sampling stubbed out framework with the listing of controls um, because I have spare time and nerd about this stuff. So if anybody is interested, I'm trying to understand whether or not we should turn this into a formal proposal that we can begin work on and therefore turn it into our project. I know that there's a bunch of folks that have commented on the issue. So my vote is yes. Um, and reason for that is um, I've been invited by FFIEC um, to provide a training to the examiners on auditability for cloud native platforms. So this will be interesting input for them. <laughs> uh, we all get votes. Oh, go ahead. I have Sorry. some, um, I, no worries. And uh, to add to this as well, so I, I've been joining in on the meetings that the uh, NTIA have been setting up and uh, they're going to provide guidance to NIST on this. And their approach is very, seems to be well aligned with some of the topics that we've spoken here. Like they're, they're being very conservative because NIST is being very specific on the type of input that they want, but uh, they're looking at trying to push things like um, SPDX, which is a Linux foundation project for the software bill of materials. They're looking at uh, what other controls that they can possibly put on in a, in a future time as well. And I also shopped the idea around to a couple other groups as well, uh, including the IEEE uh, future, which looks to try to come out with uh, guidance for telecoms and service providers for the next five to 10 years. And uh, that I pitched this as something that they can look at if they wanted to perform some form of a standardization track on it, that uh, I explicitly called out that they should look at this group as, as one of the formative groups towards what should be done in that space, because many of those are going to be based on, on Kubernetes-based systems, and they're going to have very strong requirements in the near future to, uh, to meet the regulatory requirements. And the controls that are being put in here, I think, match the, the needs that they, that they have. So uh, I'll try to loop them in, in, in time if, if we get uh, if we get. Did he, did he get cut off or is it just me? Yeah, I think it so. It looked like he muted. I wasn't sure if someone yeah, muted him. I, <laughs> oh, there is, cool. No, that, I, I, I said what I was gonna say. Sorry, I, I should have said, <laughs> I, I should have given some indication I was done, sorry. Okay, over and out, did, sir. Did it cut? Yeah, exactly. No worries. Okay, so to my understanding, probably the best thing folks could do is comment on an issue, uh, indicate interest. And then the next agenda item is also Emily, uh, issue 638. Yep. So this one is, um, I spent some time going through the issues that we currently have open, uh, trying to close out some of our longstanding ones um, that have either been superseded by existing work by the group or no longer apply, or we just don't have enough information or the bandwidth or the current interest to pursue. So this issue 638 is a creation um, off of another issue that was used to track groups for collaboration and partnership. So it's been recommended in the past that it would be beneficial for our, our group to provide um, situational awareness on other efforts within the community at large, as well as within industry 
where um, our principles and goals kind of have some level of alignment in case members want to do cross collaboration with them. So that's issue 638, really initially just looking for someone to kick off a PR with the contents of the previous issues that have been closed in this area and getting it set up into the repo. That way we can continue to sustain it as regular business. Uh, hey, Emil, this is Pushkar. I can take care of this if it's if there is a way to assign myself or you can assign. So in order to assign folks, and this goes for everybody, you have to comment on the issue first and then we can assign you to it. Okay, I just did. Okay, real-time collaboration. Uh, the next agenda item is uh, from me. So essentially the idea is uh, we have the cloud native security white paper. Uh, it is in text visual format only. Wouldn't it be swell if there was an audio uh, recording that you could listen to? This could be one narrator, this could be multiple narrators. Um, soliciting for interest here, the approach may be to break up the white paper, have a few people record their sections and stitch it together. We seem to have uh, some folks with audio processing capabilities. Um, so before we get things started, wanted to bring it up as an agenda item so that everybody can uh, get involved if they like. And I believe that brings us to the presentation on the uh, lexicon team efforts. Is so it pronounced? yeah, Chris, Chase, Raja? I just wanted to yep. chime in on the um, that other issue um, sure. to maybe yeah. inspire people. Um, we have a couple of people from down under um, who have volunteered to record. I love the idea of having vo English, the idea is to have native English speakers, right, do the recordings. And if we, you know, can get different people across the planet, um, I think it would just provide a great richness. So if you, um, and I think we have some, um, at least North Americans, if not um, just US, I'm not sure. But you know, if you have a, um, if you're a native speaker and you have an accent that is not represented um, or like a voice, um, I, I just wanna encourage people to chime in. And um, I also chimed in the idea of, um, you know, potentially doing a live thing that could then be post edited to kind of speed things up. So I just wanted to kind of give a flavor of some of the brainstorming that's happening on the issue to inspire people who might just want to play a minor role or even as an audience. Um, uh, it would be great to have your thoughts on the issue. Thank you. Well, one thing I wanted to add there is uh, one of uh, so many of you probably know uh, Nigel Poulton. So he has an audio book related to Kubernetes that he has uh, uh, basically gave voice to by himself. What I was wondering is if there is some interest from people who will be doing the recording, I can ask uh, him if he would be uh, had would have time or be interested in sharing his thoughts on what worked for him that's specific to Kubernetes. So things like, how do you read a YAML if you are actually talking about uh, the book uh, or how do you write some talk about JSON uh, text that's in your book? So those kind of things might be useful. Maybe it won't be useful. So if if you feel like whoever is going to work on is would find that beneficial, please tag me to the issue and, and then I can start a conversation. Can't guarantee if he'll be available or when he'll be available, but I'll try. Yeah, some pro tips on uh, deciphering non-narrative content would be pretty welcome and interesting, I think. Yeah, I I had one update, Jace. Sorry, I added it later. If Worse. I can go now uh, instead of later. So one quick thing I wanted to check with uh, co-chairs and tech leads and everyone else is, we had the survey out for cloud native security white paper for about two, three months now. And uh, so far, last time I heard, we have about 70 responses from uh, respond, uh, participants. And I think at this point of time, it feels like the right time to close the survey for two reasons. One is 70, I think is a fairly good enough number. And second is this will give us enough time to look at the responses, figure out what we really want to do and update the paper accordingly. 
before KubeCon North America is uh, there in um, in October, I think. So that's what I'm thinking. And if anyone has other thoughts or uh, some other ideas, I'm open to discuss it here or on the issue. What issue was that? What issue number? 480. I added it in the agenda in front of my name. Awesome. Cool. I think that's business of the day leading up to the presentation. Um, I noticed we may have some new members. I'm not sure whether we, we want to um, let them introduce themselves if they would like to on the call. Yeah, great idea. Go ahead and introduce myself. Um, I've been part of the group for a little bit now, but haven't made meetings, unfortunately. So I'm happy to make this one. Uh, Chris Hughes here. I'm in uh, Virginia Beach, uh, Virginia in the US. Uh, definitely a big fan of the work that you guys have done with the white papers around cloud native security best practices and the supply chain uh, security white paper that just came out. Um, have about 15 years of cyber experience, mostly in the public sector with DOD and other federal agencies. And, uh, you know, really passionate about cloud security and cloud native architectures and uh, happy to be a part of the group and uh, definitely interested in the piece around uh, tying some of the practices from the white papers to certain security controls to make them actionable. Uh, so with that said, just happy to be here. Thanks, Chris. I go next. This is Yanni. And uh, this is the first time I joined this uh, uh, meeting. Um, I just joined the six security Slack channel probably last week. Um, I spoke with uh, Brandon previously and uh, we actually work in the same company uh, in the security area, uh, just different organization. And I've been with uh, working in the security area for almost over a decade, mainly in the development. <clears throat> so um, the area I work on include the compliance, auditing, and identity access management and encryption. So I I'm very interested in the security area and feel passionate about it. Um, I would like to get to know more about um, this community group and uh, see what I can contribute to some of the work item that I uh, just discussed. Thanks. Thank you, Yanni. I think you're in the right place. Yeah, I can go next. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Shripad Nargauda. I'm a senior technical staff member at IBM Research. Again, a colleague from a colleague of Brandon here. Uh, and my research focus has been on the DevSecOps for the last couple of years. Right? So I'm the chief architect of the DevSecOps solution we made available on IBM Cloud. It's called Code Risk Analyzer. And currently, I'm basically working in the uh, the topic that uh, that we have been discussing, like supply chain security, and this uh, this uh, generating this uh, block material. How do you make this more complete and accurate for microservices? So that has been the focus of uh, my current work and. Uh, uh, one objective I'm basically driving is is the more collaboration with the and the driving it with the open source communities. So I'm really happy to be part of this community and uh, join this group here. Anyone else new or willing to introduce themselves? Um, not you know, I think I've been on and off a few times in the group. I've uh, been to, uh, been to regular. Um, I, I'm, uh, I work at Charter Communications, which is a internet service provider and uh, mainly focus on uh, cloud security uh, infrastructure and operations. Uh, so it's mainly in a public cloud as well as uh, container workloads. Uh, hopefully I'm planning to you know, stay more involved with the group and not uh, keep playing peekaboo uh, and get more involved with you know, uh, development and other issues to work on. Welcome, nice to meet you. I like your honey, I shrunk the kids background. Thank you. And uh, I guess Brandon is building some kind of coalition. So if this were a reality TV show, he would soon try to vote the rest of us out. But uh, with that, I believe we are, and I hope that I'm pronouncing it right, is it Raga? Yes, that's right. Yeah. You have the floor. May I start? Please do. We don't currently see any screen share or anything, just so you know. I am just sharing. Yeah. yeah. Is my screen visible? Yep. I can see it. Good. Yeah. 
So cloud native security lexicon. Um, basically, this was um, one of the ideas that was proposed in the CNS uh, at the security SIG, which is now tag security. Um, why basically we want to do this project is of cloud native security. Cloud native ecosystem is growing and the number of cloud native projects is huge. Uh, many cloud native projects perform multiple functions and uh, there has been some confusions in the ter security terminologies and we feel that few terminologies are overused or used as a catch-all umbrella, incorrectly presented or misused or you know, some concepts has not been even uh, defined. So uh, we feel this is is the right time to you know to ensure all the community members have the same understanding of the terms and definitions and how they fit in their software development life cycles. This is the reason we initiated the cloud native security lexicon. And the intent is to standardize the terminologies which are specific to cloud native security and to bring about clarity to the cloud native practitioners, the developers, the operations folks, uh, to make sure the right set of security terminologies are used in the right context across the SDLC cycle and the operation environment. So the idea of this paper was to uh, start off and identify uh, some of the commonly used terminologies which needs the definitions and uh, provide some simple definitions to begin with and then uh, go ahead and give an initial organizational usage of these terminologies. So this is where uh, this paper is at currently and uh, we have the first draft ready and we intend to make this a single source of reference for all the security terminologies for the CN landscape. And uh, once the paper is complete, uh, we intend to include in all the CNCF projects as, as a reference point for uh, the terms to be used in the context that is uh, defined from us. So that's where we are. Uh, as I mentioned, the first draft is ready and we are currently doing the internal review. Once that is done, the next step for us is public community review and uh, we will be sharing the mailing uh, a mail to the email list we have and a post on the channel will be coming soon. Yeah, that's from me, quick and short. Awesome. Yeah, any questions? Yeah, we have the, uh, you know, the Slack channel where we are communicating and we'll be happy to have you all on board. Please do chime in and uh, give us your feedback and uh, suggestions on improvement, anything we're happy to have you. Yep. So to piggyback off of that, everyone, we would like you to take a look at this. So while not super long and intensive, like the pre-existing papers that we've had, it's important for us that we get all of the community of varying backgrounds and skills to go through some of the terms that are introduced or reintroduced, the definitions that we have, um, and provide some more context and make sure that we're being clear in our definitions, our expectations, some of the related terms that are going on. Um, as Raga said, we'll be pushing out an email to the mailing list to broaden the public community review of this, but we wanted to make sure that this group was first and foremost aware and can have uh, cycles to go ahead and jump on that. Awesome. So it sounds like uh, proactively go look at the paper, you can join the Slack channel and there will be an explicit solicitation for feedback coming soon to the normal channels. Just a quick question. Um, how long is this review cycle? I believe the first review would be planned to do is by end of this week. And maybe later that uh, we will consolidate all the feedback and uh, probably next week, Emily, can we share it to the rest of the community? Yeah, well, I was thinking that we would just open it up for two weeks now moving forward, and then we'll have about two weeks of adjudication for those comments right after. That way we give everybody time because I know lots of people have meetings, things are going on in their lives. We want to make sure that they've got an opportunity to provide feedback. That would be great. Thanks.
I noticed someone asked for the link to the white paper in the chat and then sure I'll be posting it just a moment. Awesome. I believe we have reached the end of our pre-scheduled agenda items. Does anyone have anything ad hoc? I think there's a, a question in the chat or an implied question from Mark. Um, so I, I mean, I, I, you know, so he says, uh, here, I'll start my video. Um, he said that, that, um, it seems like the cloud part of cloud native has been de-emphasized in favor of um, process defining. And I think from my perspective, um, within cloud native, there needs to be, you know, like sort of more clear definition of words, even amongst our own cloud native computing foundation community. Um, part of the motivation from this came, you know, there was a bit of confusion um, from our group's perspective um, a couple of months ago about what secrets management was, for example. Like the folks in this group were like, well, we're pretty no sure what secrets management is. And then some other branch of the CNCF published something where people were surprised about how things were categorized. <laughs> and so, um, so it came up at a TOC meeting, the Technical Oversight Committee, which were kind of under their governance auspices, auspices and they said, well, we, they would, the, the question wasn't really answered in the white paper. The white paper didn't really, you know, while it discussed all the terms and used them in context, it didn't really define all the terms to the extent that the wider CNCF community would need in order to do different activities. Um, and so that was really a request that where this um, definition of terms white paper um, came from. And, um, and so this is, we're gonna do this within Cloud Native. We're not gonna be just defining general software life cycle terms, except where that's necessary, right? In order to discuss the other things. And, and my assumption is, and I haven't read the whole um, current white paper is that, you know, if possible, like whenever something's not cloud native specific, or if there's another resource that we completely 100% agree with, um, we can just refer to that. We can say, oh, this collection of terms is defined over here. Um, and, um, and that's actually, as a group, our preferred approach. If there exists a resource that is, you know, sort of non-controversial and captures all the information that's needed, it's better to just say, hey, we're using this resource. And we, we seek to there's enough work to do. We don't need to repeat something somebody else has done well. Yeah, it's complicated. Yeah, let me mute this other meeting, sorry. Yeah, the, what's happening with, in my enterprise is we're in a journey to cloud, but the cloud native technologies are front and foremost in the journey. So stuff happening in on-prem, is using CICD. We're using a lot of the same open source tools. We're uh, dealing with supply chain integration of open source tools, cloud and non-cloud. And then in places like telecom, which are kind of doing some leading edge work with cloud native, the meaning of cloud is non-conventional. It really is still cloud, but they're setting up staged data centers that are closer to the endpoints that they're trying to support. That also is, I think, a novel a scenario for the use of this. So when I pitch this to the people that I want to bring to this meeting, you know, to go listen to the tape afterward and uh, immerse themselves in the ecosystem, I'm trying to paint a broader stroke for this. I don't think it needs to change what's in the white paper necessarily. Yeah, I think that that's a good point. And I think we, we do have, I believe we have a expository topic on this. So I think this is something that, that you know, it will, it will grow into it. Um, yeah, I personally am seeing some requirements of 5G come out as well, as they're yeah, expanding the control plane of cloud native into the edge departments as well. One of the problems we're gonna run into with the 5G space is the protocols were never designed for 5G style, or sorry, were never designed for the type of controls that we are looking to put in. So they defend the data plane, but the control plane tends to be trusted as a perimeter even across 
the uh, even across the boundaries. And that's going to be one of the challenges that we're going to have is how to properly secure the um, not just the the things connecting in, but to also control to also help with the control of the of the infrastructure itself, which is going to become even more important once we get edge data centers with five G access points there. Yeah, it's 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 a really strange um, architecture, like the like you're saying, like the control of the data plane now in totally different networks at sometimes. Yeah, and like the uh, the protocol they use, like UTP, like they they literally assume that the environment that they live in is is a is a secure environment from from my understanding of it and. Um, that's that's something that, that we're going to have to to try to work out how to how to deal with some of these issues. And maybe it's not a problem that we solve ourselves, but it's certainly one that that needs to be raised and and uh, needs to be tackled by by those communities. All right. Does anyone have any other ad hoc agenda items? Uh, hi, uh, this is Mikhail. I, I don't think I've actually done a formal introduction in this avenue, uh, but I've worked with the SIG security, or sorry, the uh, DAG security group a few times in the past. Um, just a quick ad hoc thing. Uh, we brought it, Cole and I brought this up in the May 12th meeting about signing uh, short lived, or, or signing like supply chain artifacts with short lived keys and timestamping. We had our first meeting uh, that we organized that day, this Monday, and there was some interest with that group of people and and creating a more organized working group. And I was just curious if there is a defined set of processes to get that going, or is this something we could just do like ad hoc on the side? Um, and just how that kind of could work. So that depends. Um, if you check out the repo, there is a process for creating proposals and turning them into projects. We're still refining it because it's not always clear. But for right now, um, you bring up a topic during one of these meetings, you create an issue, you flesh out that topic area a little bit more with maybe um, one or two um, kind of deliverables that you're looking to get out of it. Thank you, Sarah, for posting the process in the chat. And then from there, um, you represent it again, because now that you've got more information and you're trying to drive uh, community engagement, have folks comment on the issue. If there is enough interest and the group has the bandwidth to support it, um, then we can move it from a proposal over into a project that's planned and scheduled. And then you go through and you do more planning about that. So this is something that we're trying to refine. So bear with us as we work through it. Um, if you have any questions, let um, one of the tag leadership know. We're trying to provide a little bit more mentorship in this area so that more team members feel empowered for taking on this level of work because we realize it's not insignificant. Um, but additionally, we want to ensure that the community has the, enough time to be able to participate in all the things that they want to. So we may pause a few projects because there's a lot of community interest, but we currently have like four or five things ongoing. Perfect. Thank you. And, and sorry for missing the, uh, the processes, but I really appreciate the, the talk through and the forward. Uh, Not a problem. It's a big repo that we have. So we're more than happy to point folks back to the repo on the specific areas that they may have questions, but also encourage if you need some bedtime reading material, the repo has a lot of good information in it. Sounds good. Thank yeah, you. I also, I, I thought I would chime in a little bit on like, why we have this type of a process instead of a working group process. Um, we sort of defined a bunch of our governance at a time when the CNCF was spinning down the concept of working groups in favor of SIGs and was there's a lot of discussion about they had attempted to have working groups have a deliverable and dissolve. And then what would happen is a working group would do the deliver like once a working group was established, it wouldn't want to end itself, but it wasn't clear what they were doing next. And so that impedance mismatch was a little difficult for the leadership team. And so we had had success with multiple people just working on a GitHub issue. 
um, which has sort of a natural end when you close the issue. So that evolved a little bit and we, you know, we, we started using GitHub templates and it's worked really well for, there's a group of people that want to do a thing. And so you first collaborate on an issue. If it turns out that there's a serial set of things, then we create a team, which is really only called that because there was this like negative reaction to working groups at the time, two and a half years ago. Um, so, uh, so we have like a policy team and we have, we don't actually even have a um, security assessment team, although maybe we should now. Um, that started as having an individual facilitator and having a series of issues. So we wanna make sure that there are enough people to do the next issue before we set up a team, because then that has a little more governance and rigmarole that we have to set up. And why do that if we can just have a GitHub issue? That makes a lot of sense. And thank you. I appreciate the context. All right. Have we reached the end of the line? Does anyone have any other items to address? Going once, going twice. Okay. Everyone have a great day and 24 minutes back in your pocket. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Great job, Chase. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.